Hey, this is Andrew Brown, and in this video, we are going to set up a new code repository uh, that we're going to uh, be utilizing while we work on our um, our projects or our follow-alongs, because there's going to be many instances where I want to do bash scripting with you, PowerShell scripting, um, uh, infrastructure as code, working with the SDK. And so I want to have one place to have all that stuff for all of our projects, and I, I want to make this code available. So I'm going to put it on GitHub now. AWS does have... Um, its own uh, tool for working with code bases called code commit. The only thing is that it is a little bit tricky to utilize with a cloud developer environment. So we can't use it with GitPod. We can't use it with GitHub code spaces. Uh, we can use it with cloud nine, but you know, that's not the best uh, solution there. And so I want to use what's going to make sense in terms of day-to-day -day use. So I'm going to make a new repository here. And so we'll go ahead and do that. Now, you can use whatever you like, but you're going to have to work through it yourself. If you want to follow along and use the same thing here, then that's great. I'm going to go to Exam Pro. I'm going to call this AWS, uh, AWS uh, Examples. So this will be a code base of all the AWS examples used throughout uh, AWS certification study courses. I'm just going to dump them all in here. I'm going to make this public so that it's accessible for you. Um, you can make yours private and you probably should because um, in case you make a mistake, like put a credentials or something in, in this file, you don't want that to cause you issues. I'm gonna create a new readme file. For the time being, I'm going to ignore the git ignore file. I'm gonna selectively add things. I'm gonna go ahead and create the repo. Okay, so I have Gitpod installed. Uh, this is a Chrome extension you can go uh, get and Gitpod has a free tier. There's also a GitHub code spaces. You can also work on your local computer uh, it's up to you to figure out what works for you. I will probably show how to install the AWS CLI locally on computers, but um, for most or if all the follow-alongs, I'll be use, utilizing Gitpod or something here. Mostly everything is the same, but we'll go ahead and go ahead and launch up uh, Gitpod here. And I'm just going to connect to GitHub here. You know, some people like to use a combination of uh, cloud developer environments. There's also another one by Google called Project IDX. I think it's uh, generally available, but I have not been using it because they didn't give me early access. So I said, whatever, I'm going to keep using what I'm used to using. So for Gitpod, the way uh, we, we will want to get installed the AWS CLI. So I'm going to go and type in AWS CLI install. And it's going to obviously vary based on, you know, what system that you're using. Uh, the latest right now is version 2, and that's what I want to stick with. I'm going to go to Linux here. I'm going to close out this tab. And I would never, ever recommend installing the CLI via a, um, a package tool. So it really depends on the CLI tool, but some are kept up to date, some aren't. I don't find that AWS uh, keeps their CLI up to date for packages, and so I always recommend installing it directly from uh, the script. Again, that varies based on um, a tool you're using, but for AWS, always, always use the, uh, the script here. And this is just a Python script underneath. So we're gonna go ahead and grab these instructions here. Now, if you are on Linux, you can obviously copy and paste this. If you're on Windows, then there's obviously other instructions here. But I'm gonna go ahead and make a, uh, a new git pod file. Actually, I'll type it down here. It'll say um, git pod, or sorry, uh, gp for git pod, init. And I'll create myself a new Gitpod YAML file. If you are launching Gitpod for the first time, you can go down the bottom left corner and you can change your theme, your color theme here and choose dark or I choose uh, Monokai because that's what I like. For extensions, I have Vim installed. So my key bindings are different. If you don't know how to use Vim, do not install this. I'm just showing you that uh, if I'm moving around uh, and, and you're finding that I'm moving really quickly or able to do multi-selects and things that you're not able to do. Just understand that I'm using a different key binding for more efficiency here. Uh, we're not teaching BIM, at least I don't think we are uh, in these courses. So uh, I might have a small section on it, but it's um, not something I'm gonna be reminding people throughout here. Uh, I want to add this installation script here. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in and I'm gonna add a new task. Um, this is fine. I don't think I need to specify the image. I'm gonna go down here. I don't need any ports open. I just wanna install the AWS CLI here. So let's type in AWS CLI. And for here, I'll just indent this as such. And we'll wanna do this on the before. There's a init before command. Before we'll install, uh, install this at the beginning. So this will get the AWS CLI installed, which will be really good for me. I'm just trying to think of what else would I'd like to do here. If there's anything else I wanna install. 
Probably not. I'll probably install them when we need them. But there's things that we can be installing, like the CDK or the SAM CLI. There's a lot of tools that Abus has, um, uh, like the uh, uh, Copilot or Pilot for launching containers. But this will be fine for now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, save this. So say, um, save my git pod YAML file. If you really want to make sure this works, you could probably copy paste it first and run it down below before we uh, restart this environment. We'll go ahead and install that. Notice it's dumping all this stuff in here. I really don't want to commit any of this. I'm going to type in AWS. So normally when you install stuff, you should install it uh, not in your main directory like I just did here. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete all this stuff. Okay. Discard changes. Discard. Refresh. I can go up here as well and just maybe delete the folder. Type in clear. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in uh, CD workspace. So I'm going to go up a directory. Right now we're in AWS examples. And um, then what I'm going to want to do is then CD back into this main directory after that runs there. So I'm just going to look for a um, a... Uh, environment variable that sets the workspace. This is just for Gitpod, but notice here I found one and it, it clearly is using uh, this one here. So I can just say CD forward slash workspace, it was examples uh, for you. Uh, well, you could do this, right? But I, I wanna use an environment variable because if this ever changes in the future, uh, we can rely on that. So to use an environment variable, just copy that there. We'll paste it in. And we'll go ahead and delete that. If you're asking, Andrew, why are we doing all this coding? Is it absolutely necessary? Yes, it's absolutely necessary to know how to do scripting, programming, all this stuff. Um, so you are going to pick up these skills throughout uh, uh, these courses. So make sure you just get used to this kind of stuff and spend this time here, okay? So um, this should give us a more cleaner install. I'm gonna go ahead and type in clear. We should still have AWS installed here, but if we try to use it, we'll type in AWS SDS identity that's like the hello world for uh, AWS uh, SDS. Um, it's not exactly working. We'll try this again. AWS. Uh, sometimes I type it wrong. Oh, get caller identity. That's what we want to type here. Hit enter. We'll give it a moment. So unable to locate credentials. That's because we don't have credential sets. So what I'm going to do is go over to my AWS account and I'm going to create myself a machine user. A machine user means a user that I don't log into and it's used by a machine. Um, so I just have Cloud Shell open here from uh, prior. I'm just gonna go ahead and close that. I'm gonna make my way over to IAM. And I'm gonna go ahead and create myself a new user. Ignore the security warnings. Uh, we'll go ahead here and I'm going to, <laughs> you can see Baco does not use this much, but I'm gonna go ahead and make a new one. And we'll just say uh, AWS examples. I'm gonna go ahead and create this and hit next. Um, I'm gonna give it admin access because I just wanna have access to everything. If this is your first time creating a user or group, create a group called admin, give it admin access so you have full access. Yes, it would be better to use power user, but when we're learning, we need full access. It just makes life easier. We'll go ahead and create this user. I'm gonna click into uh, the AWS examples and then I'm gonna go into security credentials. I'm gonna generate a new credential here I'm gonna to go to command line interface, ignore all the warnings. I really don't like how they've uh, added all this stuff here. And we'll hit create access keys. And so we have these two things. So now we wanna go set those. We'll go back over to uh, Git pod and we'll have to set those. Now we need to get the environment variable. So we'll go type in AWS NVARs. I just never remember what the names are. They're a little bit hard to remember. If we scroll on down, here they are. So they look in this format. These are not real keys. Notice this says the word example in it. So this is obviously just fake. This one's all, all also fake as well. And we'll want to def uh, set our default region. So I'm going to go ahead and copy these. And I'm just going to temporarily, clicking this file here, it is, uh, there we go. Temporarily paste these in here. I do not want to leave this stuff here because um, I do not want to commit our keys. But um, just copy and paste is kind of finicky in Cloud Developer Environment. So I want to be very particular. You are going to see my keys. Do not worry. I'm going to rotate these out. You're not going to be able to compromise me. 
Um, but uh, you know, just make sure you do not commit these keys. Do not share these keys with anybody. These are long-lived keys, which is not a good thing. Um, there are tools out there to make them short-lived. I'm not going to show it uh, here. Maybe in the future we'll do that, but uh, not right now. And I'm going to change mine to CA Central 1. Change it to your local region. Of course, if you're not sure, you can always do US East 1. That is the primary region for AWS. It'll give you access to everything. But of course, if you're on the other side of the world, choose something close to you so that it is fast. I just like choosing CA Central 1 because I'm in Canada. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this stuff. So we'll copy all of these here and go down below, hit enter. And now I'll type in AWS. Oh, well, actually, we'll hit up. And yes, people are saying, Andrew, make the font larger <laughs> for the for the terminal. I understand it's small. We'll bump it up a little bit here. There we go. And so I, I want to do that AWS SDS get caller identity. We'll hit enter. And so if it works, we should get back our user ID, our account, and our ARN. So we're in good shape. Uh, another good test we can do is AWS S3 LS. And we should see buckets. So see the buckets you expect to see. If those are your buckets, that's great. If you have no buckets, then you'll see nothing in there. That's fine. But that's another sanity check that I like to do. And so we'll go ahead and delete this because these are real keys. Oh, actually, before we do, uh, we want to set them in Git pod. So I'll do GP ENV, GP ENV, GP ENV. If you are using uh, if you're using GitHub code spaces, the process is different. They have their own way of storing secrets. I think they're called secrets in their system. If you're doing this locally on Linux, you just have to do the export. You don't have to set um, a GP ENV. In fact, you wouldn't even set uh, the environment variables this way. You'd use a credential file. So if we go over to AWS CLI, credentials. Okay. Uh, in here, it will tell us, yeah, we would create a credentials file. So it would be under um, a, a folder called aws.aws. We'll cover it in the course for sure, but um, it would go into a, a, a hidden folder called .aws, and then you'd make a forward slash credentials file, and then you'd provide the values directly in here. Um, the reason we're not doing that here is because that credentials file is going to get blown away every time we launch up this environment because this environment is temporary. So we have have to set them via GP ENV and the, then the environment variables get loaded in. When you work with applications, you don't use credential files. You, of course, set environment variables. So um, it's just one way of working with it here. So that should be all good. And um, the only other thing I'd like to do is I'd like to set an environment variable up here permanently for the auto prompt because I find that to be very useful. So we're going to go look that up. So say it was CLI auto prompt. We definitely are going to do this a lot of times in this in these courses. So we'll go down below to the configure auto prompt. We're going to go into uh, environment variables because that's the way I like to set it. And that is the name of the environment variable we want. So if I type in export and paste that in there, and then we're going to say on partial. On means it'll always prompt. On partial means only if the command is incomplete or if it if it runs an error, it will launch into the auto prompt mode. So if I type in AWS. We now get this nice auto prompt that's going to make our lives super easy. I hit Control C to quit that. We'll type in clear to clear our screen. So um, I want to set that environment variable in here. Um, I think we set it up in like this way. So we'll do that. I'm going to hit up to get back that environment variable. OK. And I will rotate my keys. Do not worry. <laughs> I know. You folks are probably looking, thinking, oh, Andrew's going to expose his keys. But no, I won't. I will ro rotate them when the video is over. But uh, yeah, so this should um, set it up for us uh, really well. I'm going to go ahead and just commit that. We'll say um, save my GitPod YAML file with the AWS CLI. And we'll go ahead and commit that. We're going to go sync those changes. So that is now in good shape. And I'm going to go back here, refresh, make sure those files are there. I'm going to click in here, make sure I didn't save those uh, secrets and passwords and stuff like that. Of course, if your repo is private, you're going to have less of a concern, but you still don't want them in there. So now I'm going to go ahead and stop this workspace. That's going to tear down its environment. I'm going to go ahead and uh, tear up another one here. So we'll go to here and launch the Git pod. We'll hit 
Continue, notice it has invalid YAML configuration. So this isn't gonna work, it has a problem. I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna go ahead and click into this file. I'm gonna edit it in place in GitHub. And it doesn't like something, it probably wants this. That's probably what it was. We'll go ahead and commit that change. Good. We'll go back here, I'm gonna give this a hard refresh. And fingers crossed that I found the problem. Great, so now we're launching up Gitpod. And so now we will have our um, AWS CLI installed, assuming that we typed in all the commands, it's going to execute them. So we're gonna pay close attention to here. Notice it has a problem, CD too many arguments, doesn't like something we did here. So go back, uh, too many arguments, what are you talking about? There's, oh, you know what it is? Um, if we want this to be multi-line, this is a, a YAML thing, you gotta make it pipe. Otherwise, this, uh, this will be treated as a single line. So it was thinking that all of these things were the input. So this pipe will treat these as single lines. Again, that's a YAML syntax thing. It has nothing to do with Gitpod. It's just knowing how to work with YAML. We'll say um, uh, fix, uh, make each command a new line. Okay, so that will fix that issue there. Good, we'll go ahead and stop this workspace again. I'm gonna close at that tab and we'll go back over to code here and we'll go and launch a, a Git pod and we'll go and open our workspace here when it gets a moment, we'll give it a moment. Excellent, excellent. And we're waiting for that tab to appear at the bottom here and notice it looks like it installed correctly. Great, so now we can type in AWS. Check the version, make sure you're always up to date. This one's on 2.13. Um, if you get random CLI errors, sometimes it's just because the CLI is out of date and you need to update it. The great thing about using a cloud developer environment like Gitpod or GitHub Codespaces or, or what have you is that it will install it. Well, I shouldn't say that for GitHub Codespaces because it actually saves the, the virtual machine, but for Gitpod, every time you launch it, it installs it from fresh. So you're gonna always make sure you're, you're, you're up to date and that's, that's a really good thing. I can't say that for every cloud developer environment. I shouldn't have said that. But anyway, so we're now set up and I'm just you're going to start making folders and you'll see me uh, working this quite a bit. Well, let's go ahead and um, shut down this environment. I just want to confirm everything was working great and we are all set up and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. And of course, if you are running into issues, you can go to this repo and try to copy paste the code and we'll work there. Okay, see you in the next one. Ciao.